Mandarake. Welcome back to another episode of Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and today we're going to be out of the junk bins and we're heading to Mandarake, a store that I've been wanting to film at for quite some time. Now, with Mandarake, let's talk about their pricing, condition, selection, authenticity, and location. Definitely a lot of important metrics there. Now, location, they already have it one, it's in Akihabara. And authenticity, condition, selection, they definitely tick the mark there. Now, pricing is going to be the big controversial one. But regardless, we should still give them a fair chance and check out what they have to offer as condition is definitely going to be their specialty. And sometimes condition is the most important thing for the hardcore collector. Now, as you can see down the game aisle, everything is going to be behind a little uh, case and that's going to be both for security but also to protect the goods and the lighting here is fairly low to also protect from any kind of damage from lights but speaking of condition here is their little grading system we have a for great condition a apostrophe for average b for may have visible damage below average is c and then a c minus for heavily damaged and what we're going to do is we're going to put their grading to the test by having a look at a Neo Geo AES game, one that I've been wanting to add to my collection for quite some time. And I do own it in the form of Neo Geo CD and the Switch, but it's gonna be Art of Fighting 3. And that's coming in at 187,000. Now the label, begin uh, starting from the top, we have cassette, box, book, other remarks, and the name of the employee who checked it. And this is, like I said, it's coming in at 187,000. Now, upon the initial viewing, it looks pretty good. But again, I'm an amateur, so we're going to leave it to the pros here. And speaking of the pros, I want to thank the store manager, the staff, everybody on the corporate end for allowing me to film here and share this, uh, this awesome store with all of you. But look at this. They have the postcard, the baggie, the instruction manual, all very important things for the hardcore collector. And upon initial glance, it looks pretty good to me. But the label was stating that both everything had a little bit of damage. Here's the actual big old cart. Now, it's kind of hard to see the fine scratches, but there were a few present. And then we have the little SNK logo on the back, which is a authenticity marker there. And this is where a lot of the noticeable damage is going to come into play, which is going to be on the sleeve here, the cover art. And as we have a closer look, you're going to notice that along the edges, as well as down the center, that there's going to be this warping going on, which I think is caused by humidity, among other things. And it's something that really plagued PlayStation 3 games, and I found it so, so annoying. Now, with the case of Art, Art of Fighting 3, I didn't notice it initially just because I was so excited to see the game in person. But here we have Mega Man Power Battles. Uh, 44,000 has a BCB ranking. Now, with the pricing, the little tag there, that's going to include the 10% sa uh, sales tax. So if you're a tourist, you're coming in, you can deduct that 10%. So definitely have your passports handy. Here we have Cross Swords, and that's coming in at 35000 and some change. And then as we can see, um, the ranking there is going to be BCB. Now, Cross Swords, this is going to be a great game. Now, I have this on the Nintendo Switch, and that one, that kind of like a scratched... Uh, the bug for me from wanting to get it but here's uh, 48,400 yen for the last blade with an ABB ranking there now one of the things that the manager was telling me was the reason why they have a higher price is because they pay a lot more money when you come and sell your games and I wish I could have put that to the test as I have a few games that I kind of want to sell and they don't buy just any old game um, they're definitely looking uh for factors of authenticity especially condition but look at even a lot of the loose cards are going to be behind a, a little display case which is not the case when you go no pun intended there to hard off which is going to be in the bins and here we have rockman 3 8500 yen before sales tax now let's take a look at ninja gaiden for the pc engine now this is at a hard off in northern northern saitama 13,200 yen with sales tax now this is not a tax-free shop by contrast they have it for 20,900 yen and that does include a 10% sales tax. They are a tax-free shop. Now the difference is going to be location. That place is going to take about, uh, the hard off is going to take about an hour and about 20 minutes to reach. And that includes 30 minutes walking unless you take a cab. So definitely uh, transportation costs are other kind of like uh, hidden costs that we don't really realize up front. But again, here we have an all of, we have guidebooks. This is the all about guidebook, which uh, they kind of brought back for the they did bring back for the Street Fighter anniversary collection on PS4 
and the Switch in Japan, but here's one that would be highly sought after. The Legend of Zelda, the guidebook, 3,520 yen. Look at that sweet cover art. And I'm telling you, the selection of the guidebooks, they have it. Now, this is the not for sale uh, shelf. And look at this beautiful Dreamcast. The Stars Raccoon City Code Veronica Dreamcast. Look at that bad boy. And then we have the Mazora one next to that. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. And then some guidebooks up there. But let's take a look a few, at a few things that are not for sale like this Dreamcast watch. Look at this thing. Had no idea that this existed before looking in there. And they were so cool and they allowed me to try, <laughs> to try it on. That was definitely a, a super neat thing. Now I have no idea how... how um, one would get this at the time of uh, of its heyday perhaps it was something that was given to investors i'm not really a historian in that regard but definitely very very cool to to see this and uh up close and personal but look at that it even has like the little vent uh detail on the watch but definitely a cool little uh collectible and speaking of collectibles they had a wonder swan and below the wonder swan they had two nintendo ds systems both uh not for sale well, at least the one that has the Hot Summer Mario, and that's the one that we're going to take a look at. Now, the manager was telling me that this one had, um, I believe it was a part of a campaign with Club Nintendo. And look at the condition on this bad boy. This thing is immaculate. A little dusty, but come on, a little blower can take care of that. Nothing, uh, nothing major there. But beautiful color. Almost scratch free. Look at this thing. Hot Summer Mario. Haven't seen this one before. Had no idea of its existence. So again, very, very cool to see that one. And then more guidebooks. Look at that. 66000 for the Grandia uh, guidebook. That must be a hardcore collector's item. And we got Siren. And then we have this Motorstorm Apocalypse. Now, this game was canceled, at least its Japanese release, due to the tsunami of 2011. But there were a few physical copies that made it out. And that's why that one is behind the glass. They also had a Game Boy Advance SP there that was not for uh, not for sale. And then just an assortment of games. Here we have a cube with the Game Boy Player. It's going to be the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles collection there or bundle. And then we have Chrono Orchestra. And then we have the Rockman Zero Official Complete Guide for 5940 With some cool cover art. Look at the cover art there. That thing is mean looking. And then down below we got this Sonic sign, which I've seen before but not for, not for sale. Now that would definitely uh, bring the, the game room together. And then we got this, these Neo Geo community magazines. But now we're gonna focus our attention behind the glass, the main showcase, the main event. Look at this, all this retro gaming goodness. Let's go ahead and take a deep dive here. We have Psychic Assassin. That's gonna be coming in at 209,000. This is uh, Psychic Assassin Taromaru, I believe. And I have the demo disc to that. So definitely very cool, and, and one day I definitely want to add that to the collection. Now, there I believe there are reprints. Here's Eiffel Home. Now, this one I have seen at the Hachioji Hard Off, uh, but they have for 154000 Then we have Sonic and & Knuckles, and look at the condition of this bad boy. Now, this one they also had at the Surugaya in Konosu, which I released the video for that, and I believe that one was coming in at just under uh, 50,000 yen. Here's one that I've never seen before, Captain Quasar, 25,300 yen. I am familiar with the game, but I just have never seen it um, in its physical glory in Japan. In, in the States, it got a long box release, which was uh, fairly common for 3DO games. And then here we have an assortment of Mega Drive games. Now, I can't focus too much uh, time here. Definitely the clock was ticking as time, uh, the, the time that they gave me, which I am appreciative of, appreciative of was very limited but here we have super tempo 89,100 yen and i gotta say it was definitely cool to just kind of handle a lot of these uh a lot of these retro games as that's something that doesn't uh, happen all that often but here we have a super famicom rpg now this one reminds me of uh, i believe latena from uh, elden ring with the wolf but here we have azul the intergalactic ninja i used to have the north american uh version of this and then we have Batman by Sunsoft. Look at that cool cover. And a lot of the Sunsoft and IRM games were definitely behind the glass, especially their uh, their Famicom uh, releases. Here's another Sunsoft game, Raft World. Look at the look at the artwork to that thing. Amazing. At least the uh, the in-game graphics there, especially for a Famicom game. Now I'm not a Famicom expert. I've only started uh, collecting for this within the last year. But there's definitely a lot of great games here. We have Contra Spirits there, 
we had Bucky O'Hare, and then we have some Rockman titles. And they also had the very first Rockman for 132,000 yen. And it has a CCB ranking there. Definitely cool to see that one. And then this one is interesting. Look at the beautiful cover art here. The Magic Candle, 29,700 yen next to Akumajo Densetsu. But definitely a, a great selection of Famicom titles here. And a lot of them that I've never even heard of. But look at this. They even have a old Tom and Jerry there for 39,600 yen next to Zelda for 28,600 yen. And then Ghostbusters 2 for what's that 35,200 yen and then there's Star Wars which has a pretty cool cover if I if I uh, well anyhow what else do we have here uh, we have the Kiki Kai Kai games for the Super Famicom I just sold my loose cart to that but I still have my North American version of Pocky and Rocky and yeah it's just great to see look at the selection here I'm telling you the selection is great just all sorts of games we got Battletoads, we got Flying Hero, we got the Zigzag uh, Cat there, which I haven't heard of before. Um, and then what? And then just a whole bunch of other games, just kind of down below. And if you come here and, you know, if you got your budget set and you're ready to spend that money, they're definitely going to open the case up for you. And, you know, they'll they'll even kind of like how they did for, uh, for Art of Fighting. They'll open up the game. But look at this. It has like uh, the artwork there with the villains. They're totally out of like uh, the God Hand out of Berserk. Look at that. That's totally where that came from. But then we have Wild Guns, 88,000 yen. I have the, the Switch uh, re-release or the remake remastered, which is also very cool. We got Super Turrican, Hagane, Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, and look at the funky cover art to Pitfall. I'm not really a major, a big fan of the Pitfall series, but that cover art is awesome looking. And then we have this Super Famicom Memory Cassette that includes Metal Blader Glory Director's Cut. And uh, we did see the cassette in the previous episode, but it didn't have that Director's Cut on there. But we have Biometal here for 64,900 yen. Pretty cool shooter. Now this one also did get a reprint, and it includes a few other games which is available by Retrobit. And then there's Sprig and Powered. But for the hardcore collector, that is uh, that is unacceptable. But <laughs> but Sprig and Powered, and then we have uh, Battlemobile there, which we'll have a look at here in a sec. And then down below, we have our loose cards. And definitely feel free to pause. Again, I'm not really uh, lingering too much just because time was of the essence. And then here we have Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, Pool of Radiance, the official video game. And I have no idea what platform this is for. Um, yeah, but here's Battlemobile. Pretty cool looking game. And a few of these games, you know, like uh, Biometal did get North American releases. In fact, that Biometal got, had like the two unlimited soundtrack. But it was very, very cool just to kind of handle these games. And this is, uh, for me, honestly, it might be as close as I get to a few of them. <laughs> but here we have Metal Storm by Irem. A lot of Irem and Sunsoft games. Here's another Irem game, Holy Diver. Now, this one also got a retro bit re release, which I'm probably going to get because look at those screenshots. Totally uh, Akumajo or Castlevania vibes there. Haven't played it before, but that's coming in at 25,300 yen with a really, really cool cover. Absolutely love that cover to Holy Diver. And then here we have Metal Storm. Again, I only started recently collecting for the Famicom, and it's not a it's not a, a system that I grew up uh, grew up with. Uh, I did play it off and on because my cousins had it, but it's not one that I had. I had an Atari, and then I just kind of jumped up to the Super Nintendo. But then up above, we got some a few uh, not for sale boxes. I think a lot of those boxes are going to be empty. At least that's the impression I have. But Attack of the Killer Tomatoes there, 82,000, some change. And then we have Ninja Gaiden for 39,600. And then Sagaya or Darius for 19,800. But a lot of great games there for the old Game Boy. Now, of course, if you hunt, if you put in the time and put in your effort um, in, in, you know, just kind of going out by the countryside, you could potentially find a number of these games for less price. But that's always going to be... Um, there's going to be some risk, but that's a risk that I'm willing to take. I love it heading out there. But I also love this, and we definitely should give uh, Mandarake our attention because the things that these guys are doing, the way they treat these games, look at this gimmick, 242,000. 
Now, this one was also at the heart of Pop Up Shop, and I believe their price was hitting over uh, three, th 300, or yeah, 300,000. So definitely pricey there. And then we have uh, Space Defense Force. I'm not sure, is this a Jellico game? But 71,500 yen. Look at that bad boy. I do like that box too. The Famicom had all sorts of like different box sizes, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's pretty cool. Look at the cover art to this. 29,700 yen, magic something. And then we have Donkey Kong Jr. for 19,800 yen. Now this is a launch title, 1983 vintage. This thing is like 40 years old and it has a C ranking across the board. Look at that cover art. And like PC Engine titles, or maybe that's where uh, NEC got it from, but no, no screenshots in the back. And then here we have Capcom's classic Demon's Crest or Demon's Blazon. Which, if you have the Switch Online service, that's going to be that. This game is a part of that. But twenty nine thousand seven hundred yen. And speaking of that, you know, emulation is going to be the the way to go for a lot of you. But for a lot of you um, as well, you know, going down this hardcore route. Thirty nine thousand six hundred yen for Time Cop, looking like uh, X Men's uh, Cyclops there. And look at the look at the graphics on this bad boy. And then we have Darius Force twenty four thousand two hundred yen. But yeah, you know, like uh, emulation or going the, down the authentic route, that's uh, that's definitely going to be, um, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And I have, I have Everdrives, but I also love going down the, uh, down the original, the original way. And this game kind of reminds me of uh, this uh, space, uh, whatever, for the virtual, uh, virtual boy kind of reminds me of Jumping Flash. But here we have R-Type DX, 19,800 yen. Look at that, and it has part one and two. That's one that I definitely want to add to the collection. I love our type. We have Gunstar Heroes uh, in the wake of Vampire, which is kind of uh, Sega's answer to Castlevania. And then we got some GameCube titles here with uh, Auto Modelista. And then we have Mappy. Now, this one had multiple releases. Now, this one comes in the fancier box 45,100 yen. I believe it has like the manual, some inserts and some stickers i'm not really sure if this copy includes all of that but from what i've seen on uh online listings which is a whole nother uh bag of worms there but here we have kiki kai kai another copy eighty nine thousand one hundred yen a c ranking across the board but man that c ranking it looks pretty good <laughs> i have to admit but here we are just kind of making the rounds a lot of super famicom look at that home alone and definitely feel free to pause because we're just kind of uh we're going time is uh time is limited but here we have uh gym power or gym powers uh, earthworm gym and this is the version that i grew up playing and i definitely like the music to this but this is coming in at thirty-four thousand one hundred yen now the book off in shinjuku has it for about seventeen thousand, but this has that the condition of that game is way way better and then here we have a lot of 360 titles ps4 wii u PS2. In fact, Wii U, looking at the very bottom, we have Devil's Third, 16,500 yen next to Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was definitely awesome to film at Mandarake. And again, thank you to the manager, the staff, everybody on the corporate end. Definitely hit these guys up there in Akihabara, super convenient location. And we'll see you on the next one. Ciao.